Hello everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to do a video where I'm trying to summarize all of the trade rumors that are happening right now and they are starting to accelerate at the moment and organize them by team and basically identify which clubs have been linked to different players in the upcoming 2024 trade period. This task, I will say as a big disclaimer, doing this is a little bit harder than any other year previously because I feel like the rumors swirling have dwarfed most other years I've ever tried to cover. So I've done my best to be super exhaustive. If I've missed some, let me know in the comments. Please do, but I think I've got all the main ones linked to different clubs. What you'll find in this video is that there are certain teams who have been linked to about eight players, and there are other teams that haven't really been linked to players at all. Nonetheless, every team is included in this particular video, and I'm gonna move through it in descending order of the current ladder going into round 24. And then we're gonna discuss as we go along some of the likelihoods of these trades, and of course, you know, what it might take to get it done. Now, if you're looking for a channel to cover all the trade and draft stuff as the off season progresses after the finals, of course, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I'll be covering it pretty much every day. Before I get any further into the video, I do wanna let you guys know that this particular video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Here at True Footy, we really do believe that looking after yourself, particularly mentally, is very important. And for me, what that looks like at the moment is I'm planning a big life change, moving back to Australia at the end of the year. And with that comes some fear of the future. And I suppose for me, the biggest focus is probably getting to a point where I can feel good about the future and feel good about the direction my life is pointing in. And a great way to handle that is being able to talk through it with somebody. I find it helpful to hear myself say things out loud and it makes me have a different assessment or a different perspective on the things that are going on in my head that were previously a bit nebulous. And of course as well, getting some feedback on those thoughts I find really helpful too. And I realize it's not easy for everyone to be able to talk to someone. One thing I can definitely relate to is not wanting to feel like a burden on the people in your life. You know, we feel like people have better things to do than listen to us. I'm not saying that's the right way to feel, but it's certainly something that is a human way to feel. So this is where BetterHelp could come in handy because they are a platform that can match you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. To get started in the process, you can go to the link in the description or just simply go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. You answer a few questions from there to assess your specific needs and then you'll be matched with a credentialed therapist, usually within 48 hours. You can do all this from the comfort of your computer or your phone. You can do it through video chat, phone call or messaging. So let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist who can help you by going to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. And with that, you also get a special discount on your first month. All right, we'll kick this off with the Sydney Swans. They are a relatively quiet operator this trade period, okay? So aside from Tom Barris, there hasn't really been any meaningful links to get players from other clubs to Sydney in terms of trades, right? So last year, we know that in 2023, about halfway through, there was a big link to Tom Barris that made a big play to get him across. Most recently, it does seem the front runners to get Tom Barris are particularly Hawthorne, followed by the Western Bulldogs. Collingwood had a little bit of a sniff and Sydney's name was also thrown in as a team that we shouldn't forget about in this sort of situation. But as it happens, it does seem like it's far more likely that he heads to Melbourne. And the links between Tom Barris and the Sydney Swans are pretty quiet comparatively to last year. Other than that, I haven't been able to find any meaningful trade rumors. Now, there's a little bit of buzz about Luke Parker potentially leaving the club. Not sure how likely that is. That is probably gonna accelerate once the season's over. And for Sydney, that might be the last weekend of September. But it might be a quiet trade period for them in terms of getting players in. They may look at some options for you know mature key back depth. We know they went for Hamling last year. Could they look to reinforce that as well? I think they still could. They probably need to draft one as well. But uh, I would be probably looking at Sydney maybe Maybe they could throw the hat in the ring for Tom Cleary. I'm not too sure if that's really a need for them. Perhaps somebody with a bit longer left in their career. But other than that, Sydney look like being pretty quiet on the trade front this year. Then we move to Port Adelaide, who is currently second, and that is, is quite the opposite for them. They have been linked to so many different players. So they've been linked fairly strongly to a pair of Giants free agents in Harry Perryman, and Isaac Cumming. Those names have been continually linked with Port Adelaide all year, obviously looking at free agency as a way to bolster their list given they've traded a whole heap of first round draft picks in the past. Now, we do know that there's a Dan Houston situation that's developing a little bit. They'll need to consider that. And it may hinge on their likelihood of getting someone like an Isaac Cumming. So Perryman has also been linked to Hawthorne. With Cumming, I don't know if there's a strong front runner at this point, but you'd imagine Port Adelaide's in that mix. So could it be a case of, Dan Houston leaving may hinge on Isaac Cummings' decision as to where he goes 
in 2024 both play you know half back that sort of role that drives a lot of the team's ball movement so those are the two genuine contenders to join Port Adelaide most recently as well there's been a link to Cozzy Pickett he's heavily contracted I believe again this is part of potentially a Dan Houston switch I'm not really too sure if that's likely though I don't think Cozzy Pickett's going anywhere heavily contracted and it would take a pretty big shift I think for the D's to give him up nonetheless Port Adelaide are interested Alex Neil Bullen has requested a trade from the D's as well Funnily enough, there's a big connection between Melbourne and Port Adelaide this offseason. There has been no suggestion either way, as far as I'm aware, that he's more likely to join either South Australian club. Perhaps, I think I've seen one or two articles maybe more closely linking with the Crows. Nonetheless, it's still kind of a viable option for them. As recently as yesterday, I think I read, they've offered a four-year deal to Collingwood's Joe Richards. Joe Richards now has a contract in front of him at the Pies, so he may or may not leave. But that is a fairly big offer to offer um, a player that I think was a rookie. Either way, he hasn't played a lot of AFL level. Mature age, 22, looks very good. Tore up West Coast when we played them earlier this year. Four years is quite interesting. and there's, there's a few other clubs interested in Joe Richards. I've also seen links to Riley Garcia. Again, that one's a little bit more quiet, probably a sort of a cheap trade deal if it happens at all, if he does leave the Western Bulldogs. In the background, we do know there's Jack Lacocious and Caleb Daniel rumors swirling as well. So while I haven't seen meaningful links to either Lacocious or Daniel with Port Adelaide, both being South Australian talents, it's possible that they throw the hat in the ring. I don't think Lacocious is a player of need. I think they've got Georgie Artis and Ollie Lord and Tom Marshall. It does seem the Crows might be a bit more interested. And Caleb Daniel, considering how cheap he is, maybe that is viable. But Port Adelaide are up to their neck in it this year. And that's in addition to the Dan Houston situation. So we'll see how that plays out. Let's move to GWS, the other Sydney team. Again, pretty quiet. Not a team that routinely gets players to join their club in trades. Usually, dare I say it, most of the discussion is around how they're going to retain their talent. And that's true this year as well. Like I said, Perryman, Isaac Cumming, James Peatling is another player that has uh, garnered some interest. So retention might be their primary focus here, although it doesn't look good with Perryman and Cummings both out of contract at this current point in time. We know Elliot Himmelberg was a player of interest for them last year. I saw on Gettable, they suggested GWS's interest has cooled, probably with their forward line looking a lot better. Obviously with Jesse Hogan in the form he's in, uh, and of course young Aaron Cadman as well, having a pretty good year with 20 plus goals. So that's a wait and see. It could be a late deal, but um, no real meaningful links to the Giants at this current point in time. We'll go to the Cats who sit in fourth. Now, I think Bailey Smith's most likely destination is to join Geelong. Now, I just released my um, mock draft yesterday and I suggested that you know, the Bulldogs would get a first round pick for Bailey Smith. And I did say as well, that's not likely to be the only part of the deal, but it was the only part of the deal that was relevant to my mock draft. So I think this is going to cost Geelong their first round pick, considering it's going to probably be 15 or later as it currently stands and something else. What works against the Bulldogs is the fact that Smith's coming off an ACL and he was kind of not in the best form before that as well, out of contract too. Nonetheless, I still think it'll cost a first round pick and a little bit more of a sweetener to get him. But it does seem Smith to Geelong is the most likely destination at the moment. We know they've had a pop for Jake Waterman. That does seem unlikely at this stage. It's subsequently been said by Jake Waterman himself that he's pretty keen to sign up and extend with the West Coast Eagles. I have also seen a little bit of a link to Riley Garcia. Again, not a lot of buzz about it, but Riley Garcia is probably one of those midfielders who's got a bit of talent, absolutely. AFL level talent, I would suggest but you know, a bit behind the eight ball in terms of cracking into that Bulldogs midfield. Does that change with Bailey Smith out? Well, he's already out with an ACL, so we'll see what happens there. And we'll move to the Brisbane Lions again, a little bit quiet on their front because, well, you'd have to suggest that the cap is probably pretty close to the top, and they're also in a position once again where they can look to get some draft pick points for uh, Levi Ashcroft and also a second round pick in Sam Marshall. It's currently rated around the second round. So that's going to be their focus, much like in 2022 when they had Ashcroft and Jasper Fletcher. This year, their first two picks are probably locked in. So it's probably about getting points for that. I did see, funnily enough, Christian Petrarca met with Lockie Neal. That got reported. Um, and obviously with the discontent around Petrarca at the moment, whatever's happening there, a little bit of a, a link to Brisbane there, but I think it's most likely Likely, Petrarca is a friend with Lockie Neal. He was in Queensland that weekend and perhaps asked for his counsel around moving to another club. I don't know. Uh, but either way, Brisbane's not a major contender for Petrarca, you'd think. I think it's just about points at this point. Then we got the Bulldogs. Okay, so like I said, some retention issues on their hands at the moment. Um, I think Jamara was out of contract this year and he signed. So that was one of them. Um, they've got Bailey Smith to consider. Rory Lobb, there was a little bit of buzz. 
Don't think that's gonna happen now. Tim English looks more likely to stay. So really, it's Bailey Smith is their main concern, but in terms of players coming in, like I said, it's probably only Tom Barris that has been meaningfully linked to them. And even then, they don't seem to be the favorite to land him. It does seem like he's going to go to Hawthorne. So for the Bulldogs, it might just be a case of negotiating the best deal for Bailey Smith and hitting the draft. That's all that's really been forecasted at this current point in time. Hawthorne, however, have been linked to a bunch of different players, and I'll keep it to the primary ones. So they were a major contender for Bailey Smith. That seems to have dropped away. Geelong do seem like the front runners for Bailey. Uh, it also, you have to bear in mind the other players Hawthorne are going for. So Harry Perryman uh, from the Giants as a free agent does seem, well, it seems like Hawthorne are probably the favorite at this current point in time. Again, we don't even know of his decision yet, but Hawthorne have been heavily linked to him more so than any other club that I can tell. We also know they're very likely to get Tom Barris at the end of the year. So Perryman is a free agent and Tom Barris will likely cost at least their first round pick this year. As an Eagles fan, I'm hoping for a little bit more, but that will probably be the main part of the deal. And there's also Josh Battle. Josh Battle is an interesting one. Had a pretty good year at St Kilda, has become a good, reliable third tall defender for them. He is a free agent and, you know, another way to relatively cheaply. It does sound like the contract's going to be significant, but there's a chance they get Perryman and Josh Battle as free agents and sign Tom Barras giving up their first round draft pick. So this could be a very active trade period for Hawthorne. Bit of buzz about them at the moment. You can understand why players want to go play for them. Josh Battle was also linked to Collingwood. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll go to Carlton. Not a whole lot on the agenda for them. There has been some loose links. Now, most recently, Dan Houston to the Blues was uh, considered a, a decent chance. Now, my read, read on that situation is Houston... There's a rumor that he wants to go back to Victoria. That primary contender was Melbourne. It has been reported elsewhere. Houston balked when Petrarca said he might want to leave Melbourne, and suddenly Carlton has emerged as a major contender for them. Now, Carlton could have a play for them. They've got their first round pick, which is currently around 11. Of course, if they have a good finals run, if they make it, um, you know, that will change. And I think it would take a lot to convince Port Adelaide to give him up. But again, there's a, there's a flow on effect here around Isaac coming. We'll see what happens. Players, despite getting contract, do tend to get their way in the AFL. So I wouldn't rule out Dan Houston to Carlton at this current point in time. They remain the primary favorite for him. The only other player that I can see them meaningfully linked to is Nick Haynes from GWS, and I don't know how likely this is. I feel like it's been a while since I've actually seen that reported, but a little bit out of favor at the Giants. A veteran comes in and provides some ready-made experience and backline depth for them. So that's the only meaningful link I've seen for Nick Haynes. As it stands, Carlton have a couple of father-sons coming up in this year's draft. They probably don't need their first round draft pick for that. They'll just need some points a little bit later. So don't know how active Carlton would be. You'd imagine their salary cap is not, you know, full of space at the moment. Let's talk about Fremantle though. They are major players this trade period. And again, I've isolated it to, to the main ones. So most recently, there was a bit of news that Shea Bolton had requested a trade to Fremantle. It subsequently came out. He hasn't requested a trade formally, but nobody had said that he wasn't interested in going to Fremantle. It does seem like there's a lot of buzz about this, with the added consideration that family might be a big factor here. So Richmond may be sympathetic to make this happen. He is contracted. They are not necessarily obligated to do so. So I do think Shea Bolton go, going to Fremantle is quite likely, and I think it would be a great move for Fremantle personally. Liam Baker... Also a 50-50 split. Reading the noise about him at the moment, still deciding between Fremantle and West Coast as far as we can tell, but does seem pretty likely to go West. So we can imagine that Fremantle is a good chance to get Liam Baker as well. They also have been routinely linked to Isaac Cumming from GWS. So like I said, he's been linked to a bunch of different clubs, but Fremantle's name has been thrown in as a link to Isaac Cumming pretty much most of this year. As long as I've been covering trade rumors this year, I reckon that has been the case. So being a free agent, they can sign Cumming, Bolton, and Baker. Salary might be the issue there. They did sign Sean Darcy this year on a big deal. Um, so I'd imagine you know, money's not absolutely flush. So Bolton and Baker coming in might mean that Cumming doesn't become a realistic option for them. Another link has been Jack Martin from Carlton. I think there's been trade rumors around him this year. I think he's out of contract. Fremantle has been the only team linked to him as far as I can tell. I can't imagine he's a huge priority for them given Shea Bolton might make his way there anyway. Um, you'd imagine unless Bolton does a bit of a 180, decides to stay, same thing with Liam Baker. Maybe Jack Martin comes back into the equation, but nonetheless, he was linked to them. So let's move to the reigning premiers, Collingwood. Now, there'll be an interesting case here. They have a number of players that are over the age of 30. 
Um, and you know, depleted access to the draft in recent times this year. No first round draft pick they've given up for Lockheed Schultz and that has hamstrung them a little bit with what they can do to improve their list. So there were a contender for Bailey Smith. That doesn't seem super likely. I can't imagine how they would get a deal done anyway. I also saw that they would be a contender for Christian Petrarca by the same logic and perhaps even more exaggerated. There is no chance they have enough to trade for Christian Petrarca unless they're giving up someone like Jordan Dugowie at this current point in time, in my opinion. There was a little bit of a link to Rory Lobb. Rory Lobb's main concern at the Western Bulldogs was game time. He is now getting that. And while he would have been a good move for them in theory, if he's getting game time with the Bulldogs, it doesn't seem likely. They were in the hunt for Josh Battle. That may still be the case, but it does seem like Hawthorne is the primary contender for him. I do think Josh Battle as a free agent would be a great signing for Collingwood, so I'd imagine they're still giving that a crack. They have been meaningfully linked to Mark Keane, the Irish player at Adelaide, who I believe started his career at Collingwood and then came back to the AFL, joined Adelaide. Apparently, he's somewhat interested to get there. No idea how likely this is, bearing in mind he is contracted, so it depends on how willing Adelaide are to come to the party with that. Nonetheless, there's been a link there. I wouldn't mind seeing them have a crack at someone like a Jack Hayes or perhaps a Tim Membry. Again, this is me just speculating, not an actual meaningful link, but when you consider Collingwood, we could probably use some tall timber um, and those guys admittedly towards the back end of their career. Considering Collingwood don't have a lot to trade with this year, could they go for some cheap deals like that? I reckon we'll see Collingwood do stuff this year stuff. So we'll move to Essendon now. And again, this one, um, a little bit quiet and no real meaningful links, right? I did read that interested in Joe Richards as well from Collingwood. As I said, the small forward who uh, currently is without a contract, Port Adelaide have offered a four-year deal to him. I've also seen his link there. I also read in the same article that uh, because of the NGA rules changing around the draft, they might now be virtually guaranteed to get Isaac Carco. Kako is another pressure small forward. The connective link between those things is if they're getting a small forward in the first round of the draft, maybe they're interested in Joe Richards calls. Nonetheless, somewhat of a contender. There has been a vague link to Dan Houston, but not in any meaningful way. Carlton do seem the primary contender there. We do know that Clayton Oliver could be a potential candidate to move clubs at the end of the year. I remember commenting on this story last year. It was Essendon and Adelaide were the primary con contenders to get him. The Crows were also linked earlier this year, and Essendon not so much, but if there is any truth to the rumor that Melbourne would be willing to trade Clayton Oliver, I'd imagine Essendon put their hand up. There's also been a vague link to Will Phillips from North Melbourne, former hard draft pick, pick three in 2020, I want to say. Fallen a little bit out of favor, shown some good form at AFL level, but has been linked to potentially a trade out. And Essendon's probably still in the market for a big bodied midfielder, which Will Phillips somewhat is, or at least he's a contested style midfielder. So that is an option for them. But other than that, Hasn't really been too many rumors swirling around Essendon unless I've missed something obvious. Let's move to Melbourne. Now, as we said, I've kind of covered a portion of these, but they were the primary contender at first for Dan Houston. Again, that seems to be up in the air a little bit around the Petrarca stuff. I don't know what to make of the Petrarca stuff. My best guess is given he is contracted, given what he would likely cost, I can't see Melbourne doing this deal. So Houston is still genuinely a chance, I would have thought, if that rumor is true. But they're in the hunt, I reckon. James Peatling is another name from GWS that has popped up in recent times. He's been linked to three clubs, and one of them is the Melbourne Football Club. He's having a pretty damn good year. Bit of a breakout season for James Peatling, at least from my eye. Uh, out of contract at the Giants. Again, another kind of retention headache for them. Melbourne throwing their hat in the ring for that. Isaac Cumming, they've also been linked to, like I said, so many contenders. Not sure how far back in the pecking order Melbourne is right now. They've also shown interest in Josh Battle, which again, I think makes sense for them. But again, Hawthorne seems the primary contender for that. They are one of two teams, along with Geelong, that had a major crack at Jake Waterman. Like I said before, seems more likely to stay at West Coast, although he hasn't officially signed up yet. So again, throwing some other names that Melbourne could look at. Could they go left field and have a look at Gold Coast Jack Lacocious? There's been a bit of buzz around him. Not sure it's guaranteed to happen, but I think that would be an amazing signing for Melbourne if they were somehow able to make that happen. Bearing in mind, they took two first round draft picks last year. I think that they can afford to pick up a player in his prime that I think is probably underutilized at the Gold Coast Suns. That's just my idea though, rather than anything concrete. 
St Kilda, nothing seriously linked to them. We'll talk about a few options. James Peatling is one of them. Uh, like I said, the out of contract midfielder at GWS, who's had a real purple patch lately and getting some interest as an out of contract player. So St Kilda would be a genuine contender for that, no doubt. Dylan Shield has also been linked to them. To be honest, I can't really get my head around that, why they would do that, why Essendon would make that happen. Perhaps it's a skill set thing with his running carry, I, I suppose. Nonetheless, I'm passing it on that they have somewhat been linked to them. Of course, I think it was the end of last year or the year before, St Kilda did have a bit of a sniff at Dylan Shield. Andrew Brayshaw is a player that's linked to them, bearing in mind Andrew Brayshaw is out of contract at the end of 2025. As I said that, I'll double check if he's signed yet. Forgive me, I had a bad feeling that Brayshaw might have signed and I'd forgotten, but as far as I can tell, he hasn't. Either way, I think we can just expect St Kilda to have a crack next year. Uh, same thing with LDU, they've been linked to potentially going after him. Um, doesn't seem super likely. I'm not sure if LDU signed either, but as far as I know, he's out of contract next year. You'd imagine he stays, but either way, St Kilda sniffing around some of these big fish. Let's move to the Gold Coast Suns. Really one player linked in as far as I can tell, and that's Dan Riol, and they seem to be going pretty hard for that. They also have their academy player in Lombard this year, so they'll have to bear in mind some points for that. So I reckon they'll have a good crack at Dan Rioli. They might make that happen, genuinely could make that happen, and then probably bow out and continue to hit the draft. There was a link to Isaac coming as well. They're one of about five or six teams that have been linked to him, but it's kind of gone quiet on that front, and it seems more likely Port Adelaide, Fremantle, if he leaves at all. So then we're getting to the bottom four teams as it currently stands. So the Adelaide Crows, again, another major contender for Isaac coming. Port are interested in Perryman and coming, as far as I can work out. But the Crows are going hard at Isaac coming specifically for a, potentially a wing option there. I don't think their wings are set. Either way, I think with his run and dash, he would add something to any side. Jack Lacocious is somebody you'd imagine they have a pop at. With Tex sort of at the end of his career, we got Phil Thorpe having a great season. We got Fogarty up there. Could Lacocious add something to that team? I think that'd be crazy not to have a look at him. Alex Neil Bullen from Melbourne. Unclear whether he's going to either South Australian club, but it's possible that the Crows have a serious look at him. So Neil Bullen and Lacocious could be genuine life options for them that I think it's maybe time to get cautiously excited about happening I think there's a good chance of those Isaac coming I'm not too sure about like I said Clayton Oliver if there's any truth to the rumor that Melbourne would be willing to do that deal Adelaide have been linked twice in a pretty meaningful way so we'll see what happens there Caleb Daniel like I said around Port Adelaide being South Australian, could they look at him considering he'd be quite cheap? It's an option. We know he's a talented player. He's just kind of had a bit of a form slump. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, Adelaide up to their neck in trade rumors this year. We'll move to the West Coast Eagles. Like I said before, Liam Baker. Imagine there are a 50-50 chance at this stage to get Liam Baker to join the Eagles. He's, of course, considering Fremantle. It does seem entirely likely he doesn't stay at Richmond this year. So I'd imagine West Coast would have to do a bit of maneuvering with their picks as it currently stands to get a deal done for Liam Baker. Jack Graham as a free agent from Richmond was reported as basically set to happen by Ryan Daniels. Subsequently on Gettable, they said he's seriously considering staying. West Coast is the third club to be linked to James Peatling, that GWS out of contract midfielder that's having the purple patch, as I said before. So to summarize, I think it's Melbourne, St Kilda and West Coast having a crack at Peatling as far as it's been reported. Couple of other West Australian talents, Riley Garcia at the Western Bulldogs, out of contract. Jack Carroll from Carlton, currently out of contract, may or may not get delisted. I'm genuinely not too sure. And then further to that, you've got Tom Cleary from Port Adelaide. Uh, he's sort of loosely linked him to Sydney. Probably makes more sense for West Coast as a mature key position defender just for some depth if Tom Barris ends up joining Hawthorne, which seems more likely than not at this point. So then we got the two bottom clubs, and to be honest, it's again quiet on the trade front. So with North Melbourne, I think they've kind of outlined that they'd be looking for some experience. I mean, Nick Haynes is an option. I did say that he's more likely to go to Carlton based on what's been reported, but you imagine North maybe have a little sniff around that. We know Jack McRae's potentially open to moving clubs. Adds a bit of mature depth in that midfield, potentially. It's been reported Luke Parker's open to potentially moving to a different club. And I'd imagine probably out of all the names I've suggested so far, Luke Parker would be the best one because he's a genuine leader and could still probably hang on as best 22 for a little bit longer than the other two that I've mentioned. We know they tried to get Viney. He's re-signed with Melbourne. That doesn't seem likely. There's also been a link to Port Adelaide's Ollie Wines. Again, probably not likely. I mean, if you're Wines, you're contracted to 2026. Port Adelaide's in the thick of it right now. I don't think that's very likely, but nonetheless, it was there. So outside of a potentially cheap deal for a veteran player like that, could North Melbourne look to split their pick? I think that would make sense for where they're at. I think there could be opportunities for that. 
The reason they would do that is because there's a plethora of tools later in the draft than what is currently their pick two. So could they trade two down for say pick eight and something else? I don't know what that looks like right now, but I think North Melbourne could and should explore that. And finally, we've got Richmond. And again, all the rumors around them in a trade sense have been about retention. So we talked about Jack Graham, Liam Baker, Shea Bolton, Dan Rioli as the main candidates there. I think they'll be looking to stockpile draft capital. And I think they'll be looking to balance that with not wanting to gut their best 22 in totality. So I've done a whole video on Richmond and talked about that. If you want to check that out, it's called how Richmond could blow up the AFL trade period this year. Other than that, I've seen one general link to someone like a Will Phillips from North Melbourne. It's been a little while since I've seen that link made, but nonetheless, some of these lower level deals do tend to fly under the radar a little bit. So that's all I got for you right now, guys. I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments anything that I might have missed in terms of trade rumors. Like I said, it's so expansive this, this time of year, this year in particular. So I may have missed something, but I certainly did my best. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.